ever wondered how to take stunning photographs? The first step is understanding your camera. Let's begin with the basic functions of your camera. There are three fundamental settings that dictate how your camera captures light and in turn, the resulting image. These are the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Imagine your camera as an eye. The aperture is the pupil, which controls how much light enters the camera. A wide aperture lets in more light and creates a shallow depth of field, blurring the background and making your subject pop. A small aperture, on the other hand, lets in less light but gives a greater depth of field, keeping more of the scene in focus. Next up is shutter speed. This is the length of time your camera's shutter is open and exposing the sensor to light. A fast shutter speed freezes action, while a slower speed can create motion blur, adding a sense of movement to your image. The third setting is ISO, which determines your camera's sensitivity to light. A lower ISO means less sensitivity and thus a darker image but with less noise. A higher ISO increases sensitivity and brightness, but at the cost of adding more noise to your image. Together, these three settings form the exposure triangle a fundamental concept in photography that allows you to control how your image looks. Now let's talk about modes. Most cameras come with a variety of modes like auto, manual, aperture priority, and shutter priority. Auto mode does all the work for you, but manual mode gives you the most control, allowing you to adjust aperture, shutter speed, and ISO independently. Aperture priority lets you control the aperture while the camera adjusts the other settings, and shutter priority does the opposite. Understanding these basic functions and modes is crucial. It allows you to make intentional choices about depth of field, motion, and light sensitivity, enabling you to capture images exactly as you envision them. Now that we've covered the basics of your camera, you're ready to explore the art of composition. Great photography doesn't just happen, it's a result of understanding and applying effective composition techniques. Let's begin with the rule of thirds. Imagine your frame divided into nine equal parts by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. The idea is to position your subject along these lines or at their intersections. This technique can give your photos a more balanced feel and make them more engaging to the eye. Next, we have leading lines. These are lines within the image that guide the viewer's eye to the main subject. They can be anything from a road, a river, a fence, or even a gaze. By using leading lines, you can direct the viewer's attention where you want it to go, creating a sense of depth in your image. Then there's symmetry, a powerful compositional tool that can create strong visual impact. Symmetry can be found in nature, architecture, and everyday objects. It's all about balance. If you draw a line down the center of your image, both sides should mirror each other. Symmetrical compositions can make your photos more pleasing to the eye and help your viewer engage with your image. Now how do we use these techniques? It's all about practice. Try applying the rule of thirds in your next photo session. Look for leading lines in your environment and use them to guide your viewer's eye. Play around with symmetry, find it in unexpected places and use it to add balance to your shots. Remember, these techniques aren't rigid rules but guidelines to enhance your creativity. Feel free to experiment and bend them to your will. After all, you're the artist and your camera is your canvas. With these composition techniques in your toolkit, your photos will start to have a more professional look. Next, we'll uncover the magic of lighting. Lighting is the key element that can make or break your photograph. It's the lifeblood of your image, the magic wand that can transform a mundane scene into a breathtaking vista. So let's delve into how to harness this magical element. Understanding lighting begins with knowing that light has color. Yes, you heard that right, it's called color temperature, and it varies from the warm hues of a sunrise or sunset to the cool blues of a cloudy day. And here's the fun part. You can play with these color temperatures to create different moods in your photographs. Now, let's talk about natural light. It's free, abundant, and versatile. Morning light tends to be cool and soft, perfect for capturing delicate details. As the day progresses, the light gets harsher, creating strong contrasts. The golden hour, that magical time just after sunrise or before sunset, provides a beautiful warm glow that can make your images come alive. And let's not forget the blue hour, the brief period before sunrise or after sunset, when the sky fills with a stunning blue hue. But what if you're shooting indoors or when the natural light is less than ideal? That's where artificial light comes in. You can use on-camera flash studio lights or even a simple desk lamp to illuminate your subject. The key is to understand how to manipulate the light to your advantage. And here's a tip. Try shooting at different times of the day to see how the light changes and how it affects your photographs. It's a great learning experience, 
and can lead to some surprising results. Remember, lighting isn't just about brightness or darkness. It's about creating depth, mood, and atmosphere. It's about emphasizing your subject and telling a story. And most importantly, it's about having fun and experimenting. Mastering light can significantly enhance your photography skills, but choosing the right subject is equally important. Let's dive into that next. The subject of your photograph is the star of the show, but how do you choose the right one? Well, the answer lies within you. Photography is an art and art is a form of self-expression. So the first step in choosing your subject is to consider what interests you, what catches your eye, what stirs your emotions. Is it the grandeur of a mountain landscape, the intimate details of a still life, the character of a stranger's face, or the hustle and bustle of street life? Granted, some people are drawn to nature and landscapes. If you're one of them, you might find yourself waking up early to catch the sunrise over a misty forest, or braving the cold to capture the stark beauty of winter. Your photographs could focus on the expansiveness of a landscape or the minute details of flora and fauna. Others are intrigued by people and prefer portraiture. In this genre you could capture the emotion of a moment, the story behind a face or the connection between people. Portraits can be posed or candid, shot in a studio or in a natural setting. Still life photography on the other hand is all about capturing objects, usually inanimate, in a creative way. This could mean photographing a bowl of fruit, a flower arrangement, or an interesting collection of knickknacks. The beauty of still life photography is that you can completely control your subject, lighting, and composition. And let's not forget street photography. This genre is all about capturing life as it happens in public spaces. It's spontaneous, unpredictable, and can be a thrilling challenge. Remember, choosing your subject isn't about what's right or wrong. It's about what sparks your creativity, what you find interesting, and what you want to share with the world through your lens. Experiment with different genres, explore different themes, play around with different subjects. Over time you'll find your niche, your style, your voice in the world of photography. Choosing subjects that captivate you will help you find your niche and develop your style. Now let's review what we've learned today. We've covered a lot today so let's take a moment to reflect on the key points. We embarked on this journey through the exciting world of photography by first understanding our cameras. It's crucial to grasp the basic functions like aperture, shutter speed and ISO settings, and to experiment with different modes. These elements form the backbone of any photograph and give you control over how your images will turn out. Next we dove into the artistic side of photography with composition techniques. We learned about the rule of thirds, leading lines and symmetry among others. These techniques are not just rules to follow, but tools to help you craft visually appealing and balanced photographs. They guide the viewer's eyes and create a story within each frame. Then, we shed light on, well, lighting. It's one of the most influential aspects of photography. Whether it's natural or artificial, the play of light and shadow can dramatically alter the mood and effect of your shot. Experimenting with different times of the day can also yield surprising results from golden hour glow to dramatic midnight silhouettes. Last but not least, we talked about subject selection. We encouraged you to choose subjects that interest you and to explore different genres like landscapes, portraits, still life, or street photography. These choices will help you discover your niche and develop your unique style. Remember, photography is a form of self-expression, so let your photos reflect who you are and what you love. And there you have it. A brief rundown of the key points from our journey today. But remember, becoming a great photographer is not about mastering a list of techniques. It's about how you blend these elements to create your own unique vision. Remember, the journey to becoming a great photographer takes time and practice. So don't be afraid to experiment and make mistakes. Every click brings you one step closer to capturing that perfect shot. Happy shooting! Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more.